Make sure y'all stay connected to us on social media platforms so we can keep you posted in the time of Corona. <coughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and make sure that you are on our WhatsApp groups that we are calling fam groups. If you're not, make sure you contact the number that is on the screen so that we can put you on. But guys, if you are that guy that just sits around and doesn't say anything, ah, that, that ain't it, that ain't it. You gotta make sure that you stay connected and be involved. Hope y'all enjoy the service. <laughs> <laughs>
Father, that we set our eyes on you at this time. And Lord, even though there might be those of us who might not know what's going to happen next, or might be holding fear in our hearts, 
I just pray that, Lord, we know that we can turn to You in any time of this season to rely on Your strength and not on our own. So we just lift up our hearts and lift up our eyes, but most of all, stir up our faith to speak life into the things of this world. And Lord, give us eyes to see what You see, that there's a peace that comes upon us. And as we plug in right now to get into the Word, we thank You that we're expectant, that we have met with You, and that we just love and adore You. We pray this in Jesus' Name. Amen. Uh, I never grew up in a Christian household. I grew up in a different religious household until 2016 when I had a lump on my neck and my parents took me to the hospital and the doctors told my parents that I could possibly have cancer. Two weeks down the line, my mom took me to church. The pastor prayed for me, uh, her friends prayed for me, a few people prayed for me. And a few weeks after that, my mom took me back to the hospital and they told my parents that I'm healed. At that moment, I knew that Jesus was healed and I started plugging into His Word. I started plugging into church and I just saw the miracles He performed in my life the miracles he performed in my family's life, in my friend's life, in my schooling life. And I've just seen him change me from a disrespectful kid that done wrong things to a person that is plugged into church, plugged into his word, and just does as he says. Welcome to Youth Online. So good to have you with us again. All the surges and the shifters out there, hope that you are surviving lockdown and that everything is going well, that you haven't killed your siblings or your parents yet, or they haven't killed you. So really great to spend this time with you. And we've been busy with a series called Generation for Jesus. We want to build up and raise up a generation for Jesus. We want to be a generation for Jesus. So we've been looking uh, from last week, Friday and last Sunday, how to be a generation for Jesus. So the first week we looked at there is unity in community. Even the, inside the word itself, there's unity. So we need to be unified. The second week we looked at we need to be the church. We don't just go to a church building, but we need to be the church. So today we're going to speak about something slightly different, still speaking about generation for Jesus. But before we get started, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this nation, for this country, for this world. We thank you that you love us, that you're always in control. We thank you that we can stand up and be a generation for Jesus. We trust you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. So the other day I was sweeping, you know, being in quarantine, you start doing more housework than usual. Maybe some of you could relate, but I was, I was literally sweeping and it just, it just triggered like a memory when I was much younger. I remember uh, we used to school holidays stay over at different cousins and uh, we, well, I had a whole bunch of cousins. I was the only guy cousin out of all my cousins. So you can imagine, you would think that I understand women, still don't, sorry. But I was busy, I was busy sweeping and my aunt was letting me help out. But I, for some reason, I, I didn't know how to sweep properly. And maybe that sounds a bit weird to you, but I was still learning how to sweep properly. So what I did is I swept everything into a pile and then I would sweep the pile and then I would keep sweeping around and then I'd sweep the pile again and keep sweeping around and, and I kept moving this pile. And my uncle looked at me and he was like, what are you doing, Justin? Well, why are you, do don't you know how to sweep properly? And my aunt was like, no, leave him, leave him, leave him. She just wanted me to learn on my own, but he was almost like putting me down the way I was sweeping. And I felt so despondent and I felt so angry. So as I was sweeping the other day, I just realized that we, especially teenagers, don't like being treated as children. We don't like being spoken down to. And you know, Jesus encourages us or God encourages us not to be spoken down to. But at the end of the day, then we need to grow up. And maybe that sounds really difficult, but today we're going to be speaking about maturity, that we need to mature. And even through what we're going through now, we need to mature. And when I, when I realized that, you know, I was being spoken to as a child, as I said, I don't want to be treated as a child. So in 1 Corinthians 13, look at this, so, so good. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. That's such an interesting scripture. And we're thinking, are you asking us not to be children? But not for one second am I telling you not to be a child. We are children. We're children of God. So I'm not saying don't be a child. I'm not saying don't have fun. But there needs to be a level of maturity. And as followers of Jesus, we need to have maturity. So as being a generation of Jesus, we need to have maturity. 
Now, maturity is not based on your age. It's based on your choices, which is based on your experiences. And it's also an attitude. So don't think of maturity as an old thing. You, you get some older people that aren't mature and you get young people that are very mature. Maturity isn't about age. It's attitude formed by experience. So think about that. Attitude formed by experience. What's your attitude? What's been your experience? How can you be more mature in your faith? How can you be more mature with your friends? In this difficult time that we're in, how can we be mature, be more mature as followers of Jesus? There's a maturity that comes with this. And, and if we look at Acts, and we looked at Acts a few, uh, last week, and we just saw how the early church started, but let's continue to see how they grew in maturity. Acts 2 verse 43, everyone was filled with awe. Just recognize it says everyone. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. See, being a generation for Jesus means that we have this in common. We have maturity in common. We have the same attitude, the same approach. At the end, it says they had everything in common. When you're filled with awe, speaking life over everything. Hey, in this time, can we speak life over our situations? Speak life over your family. Speak life over your friends. Speak life over our nation, over our world. We need to be so positive, so in awe of the positives. It's so easy to fix on the negative stuff. But what if we were in awe of what God is doing in us and through us? Maybe he's using this time to refresh us. He's using this time to connect with us again where we can press into who he is. And remember, age has nothing to do with it. It's about maturity, which is your attitude shaped by your circumstances. And that's so, so important to catch. So we need to be in awe, right? And we need to have this unified mindset. As Shift, as Serge, or anyone else watching this, what is our mindset together? As a generation for Jesus, what do we stand for? Because if we stand for nothing, we'll fall for anything. So we need to have the same core values. And us here at Bridge Church, we have four core values that we stand on. We know that we need to love God. That's the first thing and so, so important. Spend quality time with Him. Do you know that God's love language is faith? Let me say that again. God's love language is faith. When we have faith, when we put our trust in God, God is like, wow, I cannot believe your faith. Look at how many times Jesus healed people. Your faith has healed you. That's his love language. He loves it when we put our trust in him. We need to love God in that. Love God in these circumstances. Love God with your school marks. Love God with your school year. Love God in those places. What about loving people? Let me ask you this. Are you a nice person to be on lockdown with? Would you be on lockdown with yourself? If there were maybe four or five of you, would you be happy to be on lockdown with yourself? What, what, kind of, what kind of person are you? Are you a nice person to be with? And as we have this alone time, we can figure out more about ourselves. We need to love people, and that starts with loving ourselves. So let's love ourselves, but let's love people as well. Love people in real life. Love your family. Love your siblings, even though it's difficult. Love the world. Love, we, we need to love people in the world. So not the world itself, but the people in it, just like God loves them. And we can do that in real life, but we can also do that online. So keep connecting, keep responding. We need to discover our purpose. What a great time. We have no excuse to say, oh, we're too busy. We're always away. We're always going out. You're stuck at home. Let's use this time to discover your purpose. What is your purpose? What are you passionate about? What hobbies do you need to start? Why don't you YouTube and read interesting things that will grow you, not just mind-numbing cat videos? but rather things that will grow you and grow your, your talents. Why don't you discover your purpose through that? Figure out what you're really passionate about and you'll start to grow in that. And lastly, we need to gain influence. One of the best ways we can gain influence right now is to speak life over our situation, to speak life over people. And you can choose if you wanna post negative things about COVID-19 and about what's happening in the world, or you can gain influence through being positive. Are you known as someone who posts negative things all the time or someone who posts really positive, uplifting things? Let's be a generation for Jesus where we speak life and gain influence that even when this lockdown is finished, even when we've survived coronavirus, that we can look back and say, you know what? We remain positive knowing that God is ultimately in control. Those are such important core values to catch. And maybe you haven't been part of Bridge Church, but that will help you anyway. Maybe you don't even follow Jesus. Those values will help you anyway. 
And we need to keep growing in that. So what is our action step? What are we going to do with this? Well, this is the question. And if, you, if you're sitting alone or if, you, if, you, if you're watching this alone, you can maybe just think about it with yourself, make a note of it. You can comment or post about it, or you could even DM us depending on what you're watching us. If you're in a room with people watching us, why don't you discuss it, have a conversation about it? If you're on a fam WhatsApp group, you can even chat about it there. But here's the question, wait for this. Which core value do you need to work on? Remember the values, love God, love people, discover purpose, gain influence. Which one do you need to work on most? So there's gonna be a timer that's gonna go up. Why don't you think about it, comment about it, and chat about it. Fantastic. I really hope that's helped you. And right now, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for every person watching us, every person out there, that we can reach people. We pray that we'll, we'll become mature Christians, that we'll understand who you are and catch your heart. I want to speak, while we're in this attitude of prayer, speak specifically to two groups of people. If you've never chosen to follow Jesus in your life, or maybe you have before, but you feel like with everything that's happened, you've doubted so much that you're not even sure if God exists. I want you to know that God loves you. He created you. He's got a purpose for you. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father except through Him. That means that He wants a relationship with you. It's not about rules. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. He wants to reach out to you and connect with you. All He wants you to do is invite Him into your heart. So that's all you need to do. It's not complicated, but I promise you this is the best decision you'll ever make in your life. So right now, you could just pray wherever you sit, wherever you are. Jesus, I accept you into my life. Forgive me for my mistakes. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life. Change me and transform me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for those people who made that incredible decision. We're so proud of you. We're on a journey with you. You'll see, depending on what platform you're on, there will be a hand icon. Click on that, and that will just help you with your next steps and your journey. And uh, for everyone else, we really hope to see you again on Sunday. Join us online. Don't miss it. We're going to finish Generation for Jesus on Sunday. So we'll see you online next time.